Hey everyone, it's Tyler Binkley here and we are looking at conditional climb. This is a section of the conditional code chapter found in the Learn to Code 1 program of Swift Coding. So if you're in this playground and working on conditional climb, I hope this video helps you. Uh, the challenge is to use an if statement to trigger a sequence of commands if your character is on a gem. Congratulations, you've learned how to write conditional code using if statements and else if blocks. A condition like is on gem is always either true or false. This is known as a Boolean value. Coders often use Boolean values with conditional code to tell a program when to run certain blocks of code. In the statement, in the if statement below, use the Boolean condition is on gem. So it's telling us to do is on gem. So right now, right away, I know we're going to do if it's on a gem. Okay, so I'm going to come down here, tap in the condition box, make sure it's blue, and say is on gem. And add commands to run if the condition is true. Looking ahead, it says, number two says, modify or keep the existing else block to run code if your Boolean condition is false. Okay. If necessary, tweak the number of times your for loop runs, okay? So right now it's set up to run 16 times. That's the number that they put in the box for us already when we started this section. We did not do that ourselves, okay? Usually it lets us do that ourselves. It's telling us we can change it if we have to. Now, right now, all it's doing is, you know, I don't have anything set up, so I can't, I probably can't even run this right now because I don't, Oh, I can. Okay, it's saying if it's on a gem, but I don't tell it to do anything. <laughs> and that's, I think that's why it just stopped. So check it out. If I do step through my code, it's going, it's saying, oh, it's not on a gem, so move forward. It's not on a gem. It's looking to see if it is on a gem, but it's not, so it's just moving forward. That's what the else statement is doing. And notice this is not an else if statement. It's not saying if it's this, do this, or else if it's that, do that. It's not do, doing two different things. It, uh, on the last section, we set up that conditional code where, you know, it was basically an else if statement, which is kind of like the example of if it's warm outside, wear a t-shirt. Um, but if it's cold outside, you know, wear a jacket, wear a, a coat. Well, that, that is not what's happening on this one. They have just an else statement. So it's just saying, if it's this, do this, or else do whatever's coded below, which is just move forward. They put that there for us. So, you know, whenever they put something there for you, most of the time, unless they're having you like try to debug it, uh, it should stay the same. Like we should not get rid of that move forward or that else um, statement. So um, they're saying, if it's on a gem, we, we need to code it to do something or else it's just gonna keep moving forward. And here's the thing, you know, anytime we're on a gem, don't we always wanna collect it? So, I mean, my initial gut is to say that, right? Like if it's on a gem, collect gem. And you know, if we run that, let's just see what happens. So if it's on a gem, okay, it's not, so it's just gonna move forward. If it's on a gem, nope, move forward. If it's on a gem, nope, this tile is not a gem either, so he's gonna move forward. Now, here it is a gem, does he collect it? Yep. But now he stops and he says, oh, wait, now it's, it just keeps rotating because of the loop. And now he's just going to keep trying to move forward off of the map. <clears throat> and it's going to keep doing that 16 more, well, until it completes all 16 rotations of the loop. So there's some, we're doing something wrong, right? Now, when, you, when we got to that gem, when we get to that gem, we need it to turn. It looks like we need it to turn left, right? So, you know, it's going to keep doing this. And let's see. So we need, the, we need it to collect the gem right here. And we need him to turn to his left. So um, I, I right away, like my next thought is, okay, well, let's add in a turn left because that needs to happen. But then my next thought in the back of my mind tells me, but this is a loop. Can it just collect a gem and turn left every time? Well, let's see. Look at the next gem at the top. My next gem to my left there would be, yeah, it's going to collect that gem, and then it's going to go up the stairs and go to the third gem. And then it's got to collect that gem 
turn left and go up to the last gem at the very top of the map. So you know what? There was a pattern that every time there's a gem, there's also a left-hand turn. So if we run this now, okay, he's going to say, if it's on a gem, do all that. But if it's not, just move forward. And that's kind of cool because, you know, he's just moving forward when there's no gem. But the second he gets to a gem, okay, he's going to collect it and he's going to turn left. And now he's going to say, oh, no gem, move forward. No gem, move forward. And I'll just let this go for one more until we speed it up. And so we can see it's still not on a gem. So moving forward, not going to be on a gem. It's going to move forward. Now it's on a gem. It should notice that. It's going to collect it because of the condition and turn left. And it's just going to keep on going following this. So I guess the question is, is do we have enough to get to the last gem? And it looks like we do because it noticed it was on a gem. Now, did it still turn left at the end? Yeah, it did. But does it really matter? No, it doesn't because it was the last gem. So it doesn't matter that we made a left-hand turn um, because well, that was the very last one. So if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Thanks for